In this exercise we study a realization of Szilard's engine in a system consisting of a quantum dot tunnel coupled to an electron reservoir and capacitively coupled to a point contact which we can use as a charge detector. The quantum dot is provided with one or multiple gates which we can use to tune the energy of the single dot level that we consider. In this diagram is shown the electrochemical potential mu of the reservoir, the energy dot level at energy E, and the four steps of the cycle that we use to operate the machine. We will show that we can extract heat from the reservoir in thermal equilibrium and convert it to work, provided information about the state the occupation of the quantum dot. So the four steps of the cycle are the following. In the first one, we measure the occupancy of the dot, and we assume that we observe that, in e that an electron has tunneled into the dot. Then we drive the energy of the dot level down by an energy delta. We measure the occupancy of the dot again and assume that we have observed that the electron has tunneled out of the dot. Then, in the fourth step, we drive the energy of the dot level back to the original value E. So to, to study uh, the thermodynamics of this machine, we start by writing down an expression for the energy of the system consisting of the dot and the reservoir. So this internal energy U will depend on the number of electrons in the dot N. So we could work with just one electron, but here we assume an arbitrary number N. We also assume an arbitrary number of gate electrodes, each having a potential phi. And in the reservoir, we have single particle states with occupancy numbers n. So the energy is the first term, uh, the energy of a capacitor with the self-capacitance of the dot, the electrostatic energy of the gate electrodes, we have here the lever arm of each gate, and the sum of the occupied energy levels in the reservoir. So we can go step by step and see how the energy of the system changes in each step. So in step A, the final state is one where we have n plus 1 electrons in the dot. The gate electrodes are at some potentials phi j. And now, if we look at the occupancies of the reservoir levels, we know that we have emptied one level, basically. So there will be, at some index L, an empty energy level. And we look at the difference of this final energy to the initial uh, one, where we had n electron in the dot, the same gate potentials, and the difference in the reservoir is that the state of index L was occupied. So to make things clear, the energy epsilon with index L is equal to the dot energy E. So we can write down the result 
of the subtraction. So first we subtract here basically n plus 1 squared minus n squared which leaves 2n plus 1 Then the change in electrostatic energy stems from the fact that we go from n to n plus 1. So we have E times n plus 1 minus n, which is 1, times the rest of the expression. And here we have one less occupied level in the reservoir at energy epsilon L, which is the energy E of the dot level. And in order to have um, an interpretation of those terms, we can add the electrochemical potential here and subtract it at again. And what we have here, E minus mu, is the amount of heat that is extracted from the reservoir when an electron at energy E above the electrochemical potential leaves the reservoir. And this term here is the work that the voltage sources of the gate electrodes do to satisfy charge neutrality. So we have one more elementary charge in the dot which will be screened by screening charges on each gate electrode which sum up to plus E and basically are weighted um, with the lever arm of each uh, gate electrode. So we can move on to step B and here all that happens is that the energy of the dot level is lowered by delta. So if we here look at the change of the energy U See, the first term will be the same before and after step B. The last term is also the same. And the only difference is that we change the potential of one gate, say we pick gate with index K, by the amount necessary to change the energy of the dot by delta. And of course, the proportionality factor here is the lever arm. So if we plug the difference in potential back into this expression, we have the following. So we had n plus 1 electrons in the dot and all potentials are the same up to a difference in the potential phi k so we have the lever arm alpha k and this difference is delta over e times alpha k so of course we retrieve delta here and in the end the change of energy is 
minus n plus 1 times delta. So now step C, in which the inverse process as is in step A happens, the electron tunnels out of the level, but now two things are different. The energy of the level is lower and one of the gate electrodes, namely the one with index K, is as a, at a different potential as in step A. So let's write the change in energy. Now the final state is one with n electrons in the dot and the gate potentials are the same as before up to the fact that phi k has been increased by the amount necessary to change the energy of the level by, by delta and regarding the occupancy of the reservoir states we have occupied some state with some index m so that the energy epsilon m corresponds to the energy e minus delta of the dot level so you can see nm is 1 that's the final state after step c and the initial state was 1 with n plus 1 electrons in the dot the electrostatic potentials of the gate electrodes as are the same and the occupancy nm was zero so again we can use the expression here we now have in this term essentially n square minus n plus 1 square is the opposite of what we had in step a and we obtain a difference minus e square times 2n plus 1 by 2c self capacitance Now, if we look at uh, the change in uh, the electrostatic energy of the gate electrodes, we see that it has increased by um, a value given by the increase of the number of uh, basically decrease of the number of electrons by one so we have plus e times the sum here and we just have to pay attention to the fact that we have increased phi k by this term here which I write here explicitly and um, the last difference is in the energy of the reservoir so we have here an occupied state which was not occupied so the energy has increased by the energy corresponding to E minus delta And if you look carefully here, you will see that this expression here is equal to minus what we have here.
So again, we could build in an electrochemical potential here and subtract it at a different place um, in order to interpret parts of the expression as a transfer of heat and parts as uh, work done by the voltage sources of the gate electrodes in order to shift, to move charge uh, on the gates. So the last step is step D, where we move the dot level up by energy delta. It's going to be analogous to step B, with the difference that we are changing a dot with only n electrons, electrons while you had n plus 1 here. So in step D, the difference is in internal energy is n times delta. And now we can look at the overall energetic balance of the cycle. So the total change of the energy of the system given by the sum of the four terms will be minus delta. So we have lowered the energy of the system by an amount delta. And the interpretation is the following. So this delta is heat that we have extracted from the reservoir, converted to work, and this work has been retrieved by the voltage sources of the gate uh, electrodes, which are not part of the system in our treatment. So we see that an amount delta of energy has left the system. So here we also notice that we work with an arbitrary delta. So in principle we can make delta as large as we want and extract as much energy as we want in one cycle of this machine. Now the problem is that if delta is very large we are working with levels, with dot levels, which are far away from the electrochemical potential of the reservoir. So the probability of measuring the occupancy in step A or C, which actually lets us move on to the next, next step, would be very low. We are going to discuss this in more detail in the second part of this exercise.